Oh hey, it's Rob. I'm outside right now, uh, taking a break from the kitchen. Uh, I've been doing a lot of other stuff other than just working on the kitchen, uh, and I wanted to kind of catch up on some of it. So one of them is uh, this tree that I cut down. There's still some branches over here that I need to cut up. Uh, trying to cut that up into firewood. Uh, see, there's another one there that I need to cut down that's much smaller. Um, Right now my chainsaw, my electric chainsaw, has overheated. So I'm giving it a chance to cool down. And then I'll probably... So I've already been cutting up a bunch of uh, dead wood that has come off of either felled trees or dead trees or dead branches. Uh, I still need to take care of those and these branches. Uh, I think I may just get the chipper shredder and shred those. Also this dandy pile of uh, pine that I managed to pull out of a tree and uh, that makes really really good fire starter. I've also got a couple of bags of spruce clippings over there. Um, those are all intended for fire starting and kindling. Looking at the underside of the deck, I've been wanting to do some deck repairs but some of these joists are going to have to be either sistered or replaced. A lot of the decking is not doing very well. Most of it's okay, or at least okay-ish. Uh, it needs to be treated and all that fun stuff, but like up in there, uh, you probably can't see it. Uh, a lot of that is, there's a little bit of rot on the joists, so I've got to fix those. And I'm probably not going to get to that this year, just because that's a much bigger project than I really have time for right now. One of the apple trees is bearing fruit. Uh, there's, you know, one on a lonely branch right there, but there are several more in here. There's a dead branch that has apples on it. I find that kind of amazing. There's a few more up in there. As those drop, I'm trying to uh, contain them. You know, there's some hidden ones there. They usually turn yellow when they're ripe but um, some, of them, some of them are turning red, as I've noticed. Now, I'm not sure if they're coming from this tree, there's more up there, or if they've been dropping from this tree, which is closer to the house. This one is not fruiting nearly as much. Uh, I've gotten a couple of apples. There's some up there. Now this one, I don't know what kind of a tree this is. These are like little tiny apples. I don't think they're crab apples. But they are, uh, they're small and they're slightly sour and they are definitely of the apple variety. So they might be crab apples, they might not. I'm not entirely sure. The dogs are enjoying themselves up here considerably. Piper just got back from swimming. And even a little sis dog has been playing in the water. She's been uh, enjoying herself too. <laughs> Zoom. I <laughs> grab a stump. There's all sorts of sticks. Here, you want a stick? You want a stick? There we go. Every stick's a dog stick. That's the neighbor's property over there. I did mow out this section that hasn't been mowed for probably 10, 15 years. Uh, I want to take it a little bit farther that way, but I'm gonna wait until the big mower is delivered, which should be next week, as the family that has it now is preparing to move. They have the moving van in their, in their driveway. I also need... <laughs> I also need to cut up this spruce. Um, this is one that came down earlier and I need a bigger chainsaw to cut this down. I may have to actually get a real gas chainsaw. And here you can see why it came down. The whole interior of this is just punky. It's, it's really kind of garbage wood. This is all the, uh, all the heartwood on the inside and it's, I mean, I can, it's like, it's almost like balsa. 
It's just that, that bad. I don't know if this is a disease or if it's that it's so close to the river that it's grown really fast and it's just grown faster than it was able to uh, maintain or not. Hello, sissy. Cool mushroom. I mean, that is very large. You can kind of see the, uh, like this spruce is not doing overly well. A bunch of dead branches on it. I'm not sure if that one is going to come down or not, but the top of it's still doing pretty well. And then there's an oak there that has got some uh, issues on its lower branches. I'm going to leave those until they either come down or they start posing a hazard. This is the riverside. Uh, you can tell down here it's very, very infiltrated with cattails and weeds and lots and lots of muck duckweed, all sorts of stuff. It's very steep here. It's probably a 20 to 20 to 40 degree slope depending on where you're standing. As I've been harvesting cattails, the dogs have been very healthy in uh, shredding them and carrying them all over the place. This is another project that I need to take on again. This is I don't know if I'm going to get to this this year. I don't absolutely need to, but it would be nice because this is a pain in the ass. Also, this end of the dock should be pulled up and uh, something done with this interface between the land and the dock itself. When the water is really high, as soon as you step on this, you get splashed in the crotch with lots and lots of water. I have been clearing out weeds around the dock. Some of them I've just been pulling up because they're so freaking heavy. I'm setting them on the dock to drain until I can get to them better. Uh, the dogs have been in there a little bit and kind of disturbing. You can kind of see where the, where the uh, muck level is and this is highly deceiving because right here it looks like it's about maybe 18 inches deep but it is probably closer to three or four feet before you hit something that's solid. And by solid, I mean sand. Really, really fine sand. And this is the river on this side. Uh, the other side of the river over there, way, way, way over there, is where the river channel goes. This in between is really, really shallow, full of muck. That's all wild rice growing. Uh, most of it has been eaten by birds and ducks. I don't know if I can show you some of the closer stuff up here. And it's about as close as I can get. I'm leaning over the dock right now. There's some there. Um, my parents used to go ricing out here back when it was still allowed. Now we can go out 50 feet from the shore which is more than this dock is to clear out weeds and things. And what I'd really like to do is clear out a nice pondish area over here. I don't know, still maybe keep some cattails and things, but there's a really nice area in here that I think would be a great water feature to have and be able to come and sit and enjoy. Uh, but there's ducks that live in here and all sorts of critters. The fish come up here to spawn in the spring, which is kind of neat. It'd be nice to have a place for them to come that's a little more fish friendly and not full of weeds and things and making it difficult to try and do anything. I mean, the trees are growing right at the riverbank. This is a cluster of birches. Uh, there are several more of them. That is another oak and it's having some problems. You can see some dead branches already on there. Same thing. These are sticks I pulled from the bottom of the river. They were so waterlogged that they sunk and I was able to pull them up and let them dry out a little bit. Eventually I will probably cut these up and use for firewood as well. There's also some 4x4s over here that were left from I think when... I don't know if this was for boat launching or what, but you can see the trees have grown up in here. 
You know, this hasn't been tended for, I don't know, a long time. So last year when I was here, um, I didn't get a chance to clear anything out. The weeds were, the cattails were up, right up against the dock and actually growing through it. Um, I've managed to pull out most of those. It's really difficult to get to the underside to get roots and things out, but uh, you know, made some progress. Eventually I want to get it so that we can put boats in the water. That's kind of why I'd like to have this this part be more of a water feature so that we can you know, put a canoe in and someone can go canoeing without going out in the river. And you know, if they manage to fall in the water, it's not super deep. Very yucky, but not super deep. And in that uh, theme of every stick is a dog stick, that's another waterlogged log. <laughs> and Piper is slowly taking to destroying it. You know, I've managed to pull up a lot of a lot of these things. The ones that are in the in the area here are the ones that the dogs have helped with. These are the boats. Uh, two canoes, one small, one large, and then one square back. I really want to get this square back one out because I want to fix that wood back. I want to get these cleaned up, take the pressure washer after them. Uh, fix all the things that are pretty much rotted. Um, I've had the the little one over. It's really, really light. I mean, I, I can portage this thing by myself with no problem. Oh, says he has the log. This area is all, it, it's free and clear of trees. I'm not sure of why this area in particular. They've all died here. Um, there is a possibility that it's carpenter ants. There are carpenter ant nests and all through here. I found a couple of them and disturbed them as much as I could. But it's like this area is not good for... Oh, look, we found the frisbee. Um, you know, they're, they're taking care of the fallen logs here. But I think they're also eating some of the living trees. Like up here, this is... I mean, you can see that pine is not doing well. There's one behind it that's dead, that's still standing. Um, that one is doing okay. This one fell. Uh, luckily, the neighbors came and were able to cut it up there. Um, and get, he's got a, chain, a chainsaw mill and she works for the DNR Forestry Department, so they're, they've got big old chainsaws, and he came in here with a, a bobcat <laughs> skid steer and uh, did most of it. But this I might try and do some post-processing on, maybe, I don't know, I kind of like to pull it out and either cut it up for firewood or see if I can make an art thing out of it. Another dead stick. When that pine fell, it uh, took out a couple of birches as well. And, you know, this stump that was here. Oh, there's this branch, which is ready for firewood as well. Huh. I'm going to have to do something with this little maple tree. Um, I mean, I like little maple trees, but this one is growing way too close to the foundation. Realistically, this hole... Oh, there's another one there that I'm going to have to get rid of. This whole side garden thing is going to need to be redone at some point. Again, not this year. I'm just not. I don't have the time for it. Um, this is the septic system access. Nice little moss growing on it. And there's another frisbee. This is one of the strangest things. This frisbee we found in the woods. And we'll play with it for a day, and then it will disappear. And I don't know where it went. And it's, it's really strange because, I mean, I found this one buried under leaves in that dead spot in the woods.
I have an uncanny knack for hitting trees with the frisbee. I had to take down a couple of branches off of this oak tree. Uh, one was just hanging over into the driveway to the point where I was hitting it with the car. So that one had to go. Uh, these pines are gorgeous. I love those pines. I kind of want to trim these up a little bit too. There's dead branches that are in here and there's this cute little window. This is where I have the uh, Christmas lights that I put up last year on the chicken wire. I want to take the chicken wire down and put something else here. Um, but this would be a nice little place for Halloween and Christmas display. I'll have to think about it. And there's some more lower branches that are dead here. I think those are just kind of normal from the trees growing into the light where they have shade when the branches are pretty much shaded. They just, they're not really worth anything to the tree anymore so the tree just stops kind of supporting them. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it or not, but this one has been chewed by carpenter ants. It's gone into there and gone all the way through. I think the ants are out of this now, but there are ants all over the place here. This is Sissy's favorite toy. Um, it's kind of a talisman for her. I usually leave it on the post outside the door. It is a uh, well-loved toy. And she's lost it a few times. Um, she'll kind of lose interest in it or get distracted by something else and drop it. And then we have to go looking for it at some point. And I mean, she's lost it for a couple days and then, you know, managed to find it. I did get another one in reserve and we played with that one for a while until this one sort of magically appeared in the shed. <laughs> She is a very happy girl. Okay, the orange frisbee came down here somewhere. And now it is again lost. <laughs> we play with it for a little while and then it goes away. I'm pretty sure this bush is uh, kind of gone. There's this little bit left over that's still growing, but it's mostly dead. Kind of like this Isis dropped the frisbee. She got distracted by some smells. So this is going in my pocket. Oh, and another tree falling over here. Oh, this one looks like it might have been cut. Probably to get the... Oh yeah, it fell. Somebody cut it and then just left it. Ooh, little baby pine tree. That's kind of nice. Okay, I'm pretty sure that frisbee is over here somewhere, but I sure don't see it. Well, it'll either show up sometime or it won't. This is a uh, patio table I got at a, at a moving sale from the neighbors. The same ones that I'm getting the uh, um, mower from. And I just cleaned it and repainted it. Uh, it does have some tile squares. That fit in the squares on the table. And it's actually a really nice table. I kind of like it. The umbrella for it. I mean, it's a little faded, but it's still in good condition. It still works. There's another umbrella here <laughs> that Mom had that I don't know uh, from whence it came because there is no other patio table. And of course, the garage full of furniture that needs to go in the Epic Estate Sale, which I haven't gotten to yet. Incidentally, if you decide that you want to come up and help me with any of this stuff, um, I could put you up for a nice weekend. Just saying. The shed is still, you know, a piece of work. I still need to get to that shelf. I've got the plasma cutter and welder here. Uh, 
grinder. This is my dad's old grinder. This is uh, benches that I took apart in order to clean them and fix them up so that we could have a couple of benches. I do have things sort of scattered around. I did move a workbench in and added a couple of outlets over here uh, so that I could have enough to go. Got the generator for backup power and for welding. Uh, table saw, air compressor, miter saw, tubing bender, uh, metal bender. There's a antique table here and there's a dresser here that uh, it's, a, it's a full bedroom set. There's a dresser, another dresser that's in the basement, and then a desk and chair. They're kind of 1950s vintage. I love these handles. This table was another find. Uh, someone had started refinishing it and apparently they decided after doing some sanding that they were doing more harm than good and decided to put it out by the side of the road. Uh, it's a nice table. It's in pretty good shape. Refinishing that should make it pretty easy, but then I have to make legs for it because um, either they forgot the legs or somebody took them. This is the detritus left over from doing the electrical work. Uh, it's still here because after doing this it got to be dark and the dogs were being kind of a pain in the butt. This is a welding jig for the cattail rake that I'm making. There's going to be two sets of teeth, one up and one down, both facing inward. And then that gets dragged by a winch to pull along. These are deep enough that they can get into the cattail roots and they'll be sitting at about a 45 degree angle. So hopefully that will work. Um, I guess we'll find out once I get it done. Ready for winter. That is a pretty massive 32 inch snowblower. Uh, it's got some really nice controls on the inside. It's not a vehicle mounted snowblower, which I would have liked, but this is a uh, step up from shoveling. Mom hated snowblowers. I'm not entirely sure why. Maybe they were too noisy or something. I don't know. This is the old dog kennel. Um, and some of the renters had hunting dogs, outside dogs that they would leave out here so that they could, uh, you know, have some outdoor time. Dogs like to come in here and play. Um, there's also a whole bunch of garden, and this is where mom did the composting. So there's a lot of, <laughs> a lot of happy dog smells. Um, and you can see the compost is much more fertile than the rest of the soil. Ultimately, what I would like to do with this is um, level this out and make this an extension off of the back of the shed. I want to get rid of that doghouse. I mean, it's, it is a doghouse, but I don't see any real reason for it anymore. Um, I suppose I can put it in the woods and make it a fox house. Yes, those are the scoops that I used to shovel snow last year. I hate shoveling snow. That's where the toy sits. And yes, there is a lot of stuff that I have to go through out here yet. This is all, <laughs> again, when I get to it, but before winter. I know you've seen the floors before. Uh, that's the rug. Cleaned up this table pretty well. Uh, this was another find at the, um, well, this is at the ReStore, but this came with three chairs that all more or less match. Well, they all do match. I want to try and find another one that's like that so that there's a set of four. And the sink, I have to clean this up and reinstall it yet. I uh, just haven't gotten to it. The back deck, the pepper garden, is doing quite well. I'm a little bit surprised. Um, there are peppers on it that are ripe. I haven't done a harvest yet. Well, I've done like one or two, but there are definitely uh, some peppers in here. It's like my habaneros are starting to come in. I've got serranos, jalapenos. Uh, there's other ones that are um, primero. I've never heard of them before, but they're, uh, they have a really good flavor. And I want to grow enough of them to make a, a Primero sauce. 
but these are, uh, I mean, this was an experiment to see if they would grow, and they certainly do. The season up here is much shorter. So, you know, there's they're going to be frost killed early, but at the same point, a little bit of anything kind of makes it feel a little bit more like home for me. I have a new ice maker to install. And before I install the ice maker, I have to install the water softener. This is the tank. That's the salt bin. This is underneath the stairs. I have to clean out all of this stuff underneath the stairs and remove these shelves so that I can get the salt bin in. I'm going to have to redo all of this plumbing, so it's going to be from up there to somewhere in there. All of that has to be replaced. I am going to be repurposing this. This is a very nice uh, bypass for the water softener in case I ever need to replace that tank. Uh, this was the old Culligan one, but I've removed the Culligan adapters and these are now three quarter inch uh, female pipe threads, which is just fine. Electrical. This is a sore point for me. I, uh, I want to put up a uh, 240 volt branch out into the garage, or the, the shed. That's the garage feed. That feeds both the garage and the shed, which is kind of a pain in the ass. Um, but everything's full. So in order to do anything, I have to have this either completely redone so that, you know, with some of these double breakers, I don't know if those are even allowable anymore, or get a sub-panel put in. The sub-panel idea isn't a bad one because uh, I want to also put in a generator input so that I can switch between main feed and a generator because the water pump is also electric so if the power goes out there's no water. This place has central vacuum. Uh, furnace is in good shape, air conditioner is in good shape. There is an auxiliary wood burning furnace that can be used to have auxiliary heat or heat in case the power goes out handy stack of firewood in case we need to feed it. That's alongside all the other stuff that I have outside. Here's the uh, short dresser or the you know the low dresser that matches the ones in the in the shed. This is my uh, office currently. This is where I do most of my uh, my non-work stuff. That's my work workstation. Uh, the lab bench where I have stuff set up. I, None of this is proprietary at this point, so I can show you. So that's kind of it for right now. I just wanted to give you a quick rundown of all the other things that are going on. Just It's not entirely about the kitchen. Um, there's a ton of other stuff going on, not to mention all the paperwork. The probate is... Uh, yeah, it's a lot. There's a lot of very, very fundamental paperwork that needs to be done, and it all has to be originals, and it's... Uh, Trying to find that in the mass of paperwork that was left behind. I mean, it's it's tons of paper. If I was to stack it completely from, you know, just like one stack high, it would probably be a two-story building or larger. It's, it's that much. It's insane. Most of it is trash, but it's... All stuff that I have to go through to ter determine if it's trash because there's other things that are tucked in there that might be important. <sighs> so yeah, this is not something that goes quickly. A lot of the big stuff is done. I mean the getting the, the upstairs cleaned out was a massive massive project and I thank my uh, my family for that. My nieces especially, Amy and Heather and their uh, their brood, broods, their successive broods that came along to help. Um, they did so much work. Um, yeah, there's you know there's a lot to do, but it is really nice up here. Um, summer has been 
fantastic. I, winters suck. <laughs> Last winter was brutal. Um, but it was also unseasonably brutal. I don't know if it's going to be bad again this year. Probably will. Um, but I'm probably going to find out because I think I'm going to be staying here through the winter. Um, not that I particularly want to. You know, there's something to be said about having a small place to plow and um, warmer winters. But at the same point, I need to be here. So, all right. Next time I'll probably be back at it. Uh, I've got more stuff to do this week. I've got some things. Some stuff is coming in. Um, I mean, this is Labor Day weekend. And I'm probably going to take some time off this weekend from doing stuff and just try and relax and try and play. I haven't done that at all since I've been here. I think I've, I've taken a couple days of just rest days. Some of those have been <clears throat> almost entirely in bed. I've just been so exhausted. But I want to try and take some time off. And it's a good weekend for that. Um, so we'll see. I don't know. I'm, for me, relaxing might be trying to weld. <laughs> trying to make something. Um, it'll definitely involve the dogs. It, I mean, everything involves the dogs. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. Till next time. See ya.